billion, trillion, million, billion, trillions of orbiting snowballs, orbiting snowballs, orbiting. A flat fact. A flat fact. The realm. Do you know what the realm is? A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. It will be 9, 50, and 10 seconds. At the third stroke, it will be 10, 27, and 10 seconds. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome. Gods and Monsters of the Time Apocalypse, Chapter 3. Stargates of the Blind. This video will also not be brought to you by a magnet, and today I'm going to show you why. What does a gnome know? Today I'm going to show you a couple more of my discoveries. You know, discoveries, finding things already there, in your face, the whole time. From the moment I realised the little slash huge anomaly in the time code a few decades ago to where this time apocalypse has gone has been very unexpected. Profoundly unexpected. I've come to understand that the before people, the older ones, had an intelligence far beyond us. The time apocalypse is the lifting of the veil. The lifting of the veil of axioms. An axiom is something that is self-evident. Self-evident things we are not seeing. Right at the end of my last video, chapter 2, I dropped an end screen and I didn't say anything, I just left it there. So if you watched till the end, you would have seen my little teaser. I've discovered some ancient technology that is still working. And even some of the broken ones are still working. And upon discovering this ancient working technology, I also rediscovered many lost secrets of the Freemasons. I discovered their lost books. Not all the pages of the books, but I know where the books are, and I know what the books contain. And you might have heard of a character in Freemasonry called Huram the Biff. Apparently his big secret was lost upon his assassination in ancient times. Until now. So these are pretty big claims. Well, I will be cueing the epic music at the epic moment. I made a number of discoveries relating to time. I have not published this particular discovery anywhere, so y'all will be the first to see it. In order to make the discoveries in these chapters, I realised many years ago that much I learned was a do-over. A do-over. Gods and monsters, so where would you put the craft of Freemasonry? These secret societies with repeated rituals allegedly descended from the mystery schools of ancient Egypt. Much has become urban myth about Freemasons. The Freemasons in my research have shown nothing to do with construction of buildings. This is not their craft. This is not what their rituals are about. It did not take much research of the Freemasons and their documents to discover this. Their craft is speculative. And I will show you that they don't know what their rituals actually mean. I call these structures Stargates of the Blind. Left by the Olden Ones, these structures are built in various locations around Earth. And they are called different names in different locations and countries. Archways, Triumphal Arches, Gateway of the Gods, Portals. Some people have imagined that they could be portals to other worlds or dimensions. I'm going to summarise the most important points and in layman terms as much as possible. This is an archway and this is a keystone. A keystone, also known as a capstone, is the wedge-shaped stone at the apex of a masonry arch. The keystone is a significant symbol in the York Rite of Freemasonry. In masonry, Hirama Biff is known as the inventor of the keystone and its significance was lost upon his assassination. 
Well, the keystone is the central stone in an arch and it holds all the other stones in place. And if it's removed, the arch crumbles. Since this fact about the keystone and its purpose in construction is well known, this cannot be the lost information of the character Hiramabith. So when was Hiramabith assassinated? There are a great many theories as to his timeline. The story of Hiram Abif is stated to come from ancient times and Hiram Abif is considered the central figure in Freemasonry. So we ascertain from their writings that the significance of the keystone was lost in ancient times upon the assassination of Hiram Abif and the keys to deciphering the keystone were lost, the keys to deciphering the capstone were lost, lost means not found, which also means they don't know. Until now, I've discovered the significance of the keystone. I found the keys. I know where their lost sacred books are. I don't know what all the pages say, but I know where they are and I know what they contain. And the flat fact of the matter is, those keys and those books belong to all of us. They are our inheritance. The keystone is the central stone of an arch and we have structures left on the ground and artwork of arches that either once existed or perhaps were planned to be built. Some are incredibly beautiful, not built by a lazy, stupid or an impatient people. Some of them have been moved to other locations, which in itself is a monumental task. Some of them have grand historical stories. This section is from Wikipedia. Little is known about how the Romans viewed triumphal arches. Pliny the Elder writing in the first century AD was the only ancient author to discuss them and he wrote that they were intended to elevate above the ordinary world. An image of an honoured person, usually depicted in the form of a statue with a quadriga. However, the designs of Roman imperial triumphal arches which became increasingly elaborate over time and involved a regularised set of features were clearly intended to convey a number of messages to the spectator. What messages were they intended to convey? Pliny states, if the translation is correct, that they are intended to elevate above the ordinary world. Corbin Dallas on Stolen History did a post on these structures. I will post a link to Corbin's post in the Wikipedia narrative. I had about three pages of text written just on the historical narrative before I came across his post. Corbin Dallas states the issue in a short and concise way, so I'm just going to quote him. Corbin Dallas says he's been looking at these structures for some time. I quote, one of the hardest puzzles to crack they are. There is essentially no valuable information to be obtained via searching for a triumphal arch. He continues, I quote, we are led to believe that these arches are decorative buildings meant to please an ego. I struggle to find another structure which in its conventional state would be as worthless as these arches. In Corbin Dallas's opinion, these arches serve no practical purpose, serve no defensive purpose, not easy to build. End quote. Up until I discovered what they do, I had concurred with Mr. Dallas's opinion. The top search for triumphal arch is the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. This is Google Earth Pro for Windows and it's a freebie. Zooming in on Google Earth to the location, the arch is here. This is the third video I have now mentioned that will not be brought to you by a magnet. In my opinion, using a magnet is like looking for love in the wrong place. That has made people's minds a little bit lazy. Google Earth is lined up to Magnetic North. So how about I just move it around and line it up with the sun's east and west? Hello, do you see what I see? Let me show you. I see this. See this cross in the roads? The crossroads. Paris is of the olden ones. I have a criteria. If what the olden people left on the ground or the evidence in the sky does not agree with the encyclopedic historical or archaeological record, 
the record is wrong. There are many researchers looking for the older one's ancient tech, but thinking of tech we understand, we need to think like them. So while the historians and the encyclopedic books of authority have told you they were built to commemorate military triumph with elaborate stories of kings and rulers and their conquests, not one of them, the encyclopedias, the historians, nor any archaeologist, Freemason, or even an architect worked out what they do. I'm going to let the art of triumph in Paris show you what they do and tell you what they are. Ladies and gentlemen, today I present to you undisputed proof of astoundingly beautiful olden day technology still working, still working, and even some of the broken ones are still working. Remember I stated our ancestors were a patient people, a people who were not lazy or stupid. No magnets, no electricity, just cleverness. Cue the epic music. Ah, not that one. I made because there are no videos showing the events. How is their purpose not recorded in the historical record? People have taken the odd photo. Oh look, the sun's shining through the arch. They took a photo and went on with their day, not giving it another thought. These arches show a great deal that will require a rewrite of the narrative, and this video will only be a summary. They are the gates of the sun, the triumphal victory of the sun, stargates, time portals of the days, years, months and centuries. And at one time they were measured by the people whose job it was to measure. They forgot. Everyone forgot. As Pliny stated, they were meant to elevate above the ordinary world. Every single one of these arches, if they are in the original locations, will be working like this. Two times a year, the sun will rise directly in the center of the arch. But also, if you go around the other side, you will see the western view and the sun set in the center of the arch two times a year. Two sunrises and two sunsets, two times a year. Every archway with a single arch will need to be re-examined to determine whether the central arch measures the two equinoxes or the two solstices, or whether the arches be moved by the people who forgot that they do. After I realized what they do, after I asked the right question, then the answers seem to be everywhere. I am still confounded as to why the flat fact that the arches across Earth are time technology is not common knowledge, considering the really big clues were there all the time. This is how you can see and measure the degrees of the sun. This is what has been passed down to us. This is what they taught. And at this point, it doesn't matter what you think or what you believe. These videos are about the time apocalypse. Our counting of time comes from the olden ones. And the olden ones did not measure time by some imaginary vantage point outside, but from what they witnessed with their eyes. They also believed 
that God created the world. He was the creator, the great architect, the everlasting poet, and that this was the son of God, the king, and this was the moon of God, the queen of heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, I see we come from greatness, a people of great skills, a people who thought in poetry and art, geometry and mathematics, with a bit of cipher thrown in for those paying attention. These structures are not hidden under a bed. They are not hidden in secret locations. They are monumental. They built these extraordinary stargates earthwide, these time portals to last for a very long time. And who do you think they built them for? For us, for all of us, their descendants. Do you think they could have possibly imagined that their descendants would look upon their great works like dumbfounded monkeys while we watch them and other important works crumble to dust? It will be 9.50 and 10 seconds. As I've shown in previous chapters, and it really should be common knowledge among men, the ancestors of old grouped the stars into constellations. They anthropomorphized these groups of stars into animals, people, and things. Many of the archers still display an anthropomorphic depiction. The figure of a man, sometimes a woman, riding a chariot with a quadriga of four horses. The encyclopedic books of authority tell us that this anthropomorphic depiction stands for Sol Invictus, unconquered sun, who was the official sun god of the later Roman Empire and a patron of soldiers. We see this on tokens from the past, on paintings, mosaics, and sculptures. Let me put this into the layman terms of us, us who are now awakening from the modern dark ages. This is a depiction of the sun and its four positions throughout the year, two equinoxes and two solstices. The statues tell you what the archway is about. It's in the name. This is the Arch of Centuries in the Philippines. The Arch of Centuries was originally erected around 1680 at Intramuros in the Philippines and was formerly the original entrance to the University of Santos Tomas. After World War II in the 1940s, the university transferred to its present location at San Paloc. The arch was relocated and carried piece by piece and was re-erected at the present plaza in Tremuros in 1954. Notice, originally this arch of centuries was at the entrance to a university, a place of learning. Let me translate this from the older one's language to the language of us. Arch of centuries, measuring the arc of degrees of the centuries of the sun. If the dates are correct, for 318 years, this arch measured the years of the sun into the centuries of the sun. And in the 1940s, people who didn't have a clue of this arch's important purpose moved it. Very unfortunate. It's in a name. This is the Janus Arch, also known as the Gates of Janus. Janus means archway in Latin. Janus was the Roman god of gateways and beginnings. Janus is depicted as either having two faces looking in opposite directions, or sometimes three faces. The letter J did not exist in the Latin alphabet, so Janus can also be read as Zionus or Janus. There is a lot of encyclopedic information about Janus, the Black Sheep researcher Paul has presented a number of videos with detailed research on what he has found out about Janus. 
You will see his sense in his mind that understanding Janus is important. I'd like to point you to his channel and his research on Janus, as well as his other videos, especially the videos on the Great Vow Shift. This archway of Janus has four sides, four facades, four faces. The east side, the north side, the west side. And the south side. We are taught to remember and repeat north, south, east and west. But of course, this description has to do with magnetic bearings, not the sun. And remember, the time apocalypse is not brought to you by a magnet. East, north, west and south. E-N-W-S. It is important to remember that they started at east. And in our timeline, the path of the sun's journey is east, north, west and south. As of writing, the sun is just about to enter the position of the March equinox 2021 at the zero degree equator equinox latitude. The true and correct first day of the year. Happy New Year. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you think the arches with three archways might be measuring? I take this opportunity to introduce another forgotten thing. While I am quoting dates, please understand that I do not think these dates are correct. A reminder, an axiom is something that is self-evident. A self-evident thing is a flat fact, a truth, not a piece of philosophy or a theory. Let me introduce you to the Axiom of Maria, which is attributed to 3rd century alchemist Maria Prophetessa, also called Mary the Jewess, Sister of Moses or the Copt. I will summarise and you can fish for more in the links. The Axiom of Maria is a precept in alchemy. One becomes two, two becomes three, and out of the third comes the one as the fourth. The axiom served as a reoccurring theme associated with alchemy for over 17 centuries. That's 1,700 years the axiom of Maria was taught in the sciences. And then, somewhere in time, no one remembered what it meant. Carl Jung philosophized that the axiom of Maria was, I quote, a journey from the state of undifferentiated wholeness to a consciously realised and experienced state of differentiation and unity, all within the same being. This final state is of course a paradoxical experience, the ultimate paradox upon which the individual process is based. It can also be seen as a consciousness experience of the self. No, not philosophy, Mr. Young. One becomes two, two becomes three, and out of the third comes the one as the fourth. The axiom of Maria is the sun's position four times a year. It's in a name. The Arc de Triomphe du Carousel is another arch located in Paris and not coincidentally on the exact same road as the first arch I showed you at the beginning of this video. The Arc de Triomphe du Carousel is stated to be built between 1806 and 1808 to commemorate Napoleon's military victories of the previous year. This arch has the depiction of Sol Invictus and the Four Horses. We also see on this arch an extra two anthropomorphic human depictions, so this makes three. Three. A trinity. The archway has three arches. The central arch should measure the sunrise of the March and September equinox. The arch of the northern side will measure the June solstice. And the arch of the southern side will measure the December solstice. Whether these two exterior archways still line up with a plumb line directly in the centre will date the archways and will give us information. 
Remember chapter two in the Tropicus Drift of the Solstices? The Arc de Triomphe du Carousel. They knew the sun made a circuit from the March equinox to the June solstice to the September equinox to the December solstice and then back to the March equinox. You know this too. Circuit, circle, circus, carousel. The translation from the older one's poetical language to the awakening us's, the arc degrees of the circuit, the carousel of the triumphal son of God. This is the Carousel de Carpentas, the Carousel of the Carpenter. Who is the Carpenter? The great architect of the universe? The son of a Carpenter could also be called a Carpenter. In the writings of Max Heindel, titled Freemasonry and Catholicism, I quote, It is said that Jesus was the son of a Carpenter, but the Greek word is tekton and means builder. Arch is the Greek name of primordial matter. It is also said that Jesus was a carpenter, a tecton himself. It is true, he was a tecton, builder or mason, a son of God, the grand architecton. End quote. Notice in the writings of Max Heindel, he states that arch is the Greek name of primordial matter. Do you think I've showed you all that they do? Could there be more? Yes, there is. Of course there is. I have one more arch to present in this chapter, and I save this one for the last. By the historical writings, we see the significance of the keystone was lost upon the assassination of Hiram Mabiff in ancient times, and we see nowhere in the encyclopedic record is their function as time portals identified. Nowhere. Yet, we have the Triumphal Arch at the Pan Pacific World Exhibition. Many of you will probably have seen much about these world exhibitions and perhaps even investigated this particular world exhibition. The historical narrative states that the Panama Pacific International Exhibition was a World's Fair held in San Francisco, California, United States from February the 20th to December the 4th, 1915. These constructions were more of a complex than a solitary trifle arch. The complex depicts the nations of the East and the nations of the West. In modern English, when we think of nations, we think of countries. The nations of the East and West at this complex are the movement of the sky. All that remains of this stunning architectural complex of photographs including a photograph of the arch being destroyed. I'm going to read the inscriptions on the arch, remembering that it is written that Pliny said they were meant to elevate above the ordinary world. And as I stated at the beginning, not one encyclopedic narrative or the historians or archeologists discovered their function as time devices. The Pan-Pacific Exposition is declared to be in the year 1915. World War I started in 1914, so they're having a world exhibition to showcase the world, and people from all over the world have turned up to showcase this stuff, and building gloriousness in the middle of a world war? Anyway, let me read the inscriptions on this arch. On the left inscription we read, they who know the truth are not equal to those who love it. The inscription on the right reads, Our eyes and hearts uplifted seem to rest on heaven's radiance. Big clue there. And the inscription in the centre reads, The moon sinks yonder in the west, while the glorious sun behind the herald dawn appears. Thus rise and set in constant change, those shiny orbs and regulate the very life over this our world. The moon sinks yonder in the west while the glorious sun behind the herald dawn appears. What time of the year will you see the moon sink in the west while at the same time the sun appears at dawn? Can you work it out? Those shining orbs and regulate the very life over this our world. Regulate. What does regulate mean? 
Interestingly, the only place I found reference to this word was in a slang dictionary. Slang dictionaries, you know, the dictionaries of the language of the people. Regulate, a combination of relate and recall. Let us regulate the archways. No longer will there be stargates of the blind. The archways are time technology, a visible axiom, a flat fact. Time portals, built to last for generations of descendants to continue their magnus opus, their great work, to continue measuring. Why would the ancestors go to such great lengths to measure? This video has gotten a wee bit long, so I shall have to continue in chapter 4. Thank you for watching. Much love to you all.